Hi everybody, welcome to another podcast. It's been about two weeks since I've done a podcast and unfortunately I wanted to do them each week. I've been really busy the last two weeks. I had two trade shows to go to. I had Game Cleveland, which obviously was in Cleveland, Ohio. And then I had PGX, which was the Pittsburgh Game Expo in Monroeville outside of Pittsburgh. Game Cleveland was fun, very crowded, very busy, not what I expected. Less video retro gaming stuff and more toys. But it was okay. Eh. I didn't like my position where I was at. Originally I was supposed to be upstairs in the food court overflow area and I didn't think that was a good idea and I got moved. That's why I kept asking and asking. I paid extra and got moved down to the developer section, the indie developer section. So I spent the whole day staring at a wall. Yeah, I probably would have been a lot better off sitting upstairs in the food court with the other people. Which was nice, wide and open, so lesson learned. PGX? PGX was different. I didn't have a big spot. I only had a six foot wide spot. Most spots I get are at least eight foot wide. Um, some of them I get double tables, so it's 16 foot or I get a corner. Um, this was only eight foot, so I couldn't put a, my banner behind me for the Retro Gamers Club. And I basically went down there with all of my old retro stuff to sell instead of all the new games and the setups to play them. And I actually did a hell of a lot better. <laughs> so. I'm keeping that in mind. The retro gaming stuff seems to attract a lot of people at those kinds of conventions. Uh, Torgs is supposed to, is coming up next month on uh, November 5th or thereabouts. Um, if I'm going, I got two tables paid for and I need to go, but we'll see what happens. Some things are not lining up right, but I need to go. Anywho. I wanted to give you a few updates here. Oh, before I get going here, you might notice a little thing right there. Mark from the ClicoVision Fanatics, ClicoVision and Adam Fanatics Facebook group has made these Fanatics 82 keychains, as you can see hanging there. Pretty darn cool. He sent me a number of them. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, if they're, I'm going to prize them out to people or if I'm going to put them in my store for sale. But if you're interested in them, you should contact Mark because these are pretty darn cool. Now, I wanted to show you some things I got. First, a little bit of coffee. As Graveyard Girl goes, sippy, sippy, ah, yeah. Couple things. This right here, if you're unaware, um, I've sold oh, 700 thereabouts games in the last year, and all of those games require me to take an old game, like Donkey Kong Smurfs, or even a Dead System game and tear the cartridge apart, take the ROM out, which I resell the ROMs. Um, try to remove all the label, try to clean it up, put a new ROM, PC board in it, PCB board in it, new label on it. But they always have that I'm 40 years old look to them, no matter how hard you clean them. It's worked out, but I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy, one, having to destroy old stuff, two, all the effort I put into cleaning them, and then when I'm done, they still don't look good. So, I've been looking and looking. There's a company out there in the ColecoVision world that kind of rides with ColecoVision and that has brand new cartridge shells for sale. Maybe. Sometimes they don't want to sell to people. Sometimes they don't respond to you. Sometimes they just charge too much. $10 a shell? No. So, I searched and I searched and I searched and I found a company over that I get my other stuff up to. JLC, PCB. I sent them the files, and they sent me back five of these. Nice, solid, purdy game shells. Done in the CBS design because I like that a little bit more than the ColecoVision because it doesn't have the little inset in the back for the overlays, which I don't use, and it doesn't have an inset for the label which is nice because then I can just put a square label on it or a little label on the top. 
but these are very solid. They don't have a 3D print look to them at all. They are nice. And I got them white on purpose because I wanted to differentiate. So I ordered five of them and they sent them to me and I just wanted to see. Five of them, I'm getting them down at cost of about $5.25 a piece shipped to me. That's not bad. That's roughly what I would be doing for recycles. Recycles puts me anywhere between three and five dollars a cartridge, plus my time to recycle them down and then I'm never happy with the look. These, I am very happy with the way they look. They are very, very nice. So, the next game, we'll have these. There's a lead time. It takes about three weeks for me to get these done up, so the next game I'll have to order a hundred at a shot. Just to have enough. And then I got these two because obviously you gotta prepare for the next game. 200 circuit boards. Uh, let's just take what this is. Ready for use. Uh, it's kind of hard to see them because the way they're packaged, but 200 of them ready to go. Oh, ready to have some ROMs dropped on them. And I'm making a mess. Let's try this again. So there we go. We have those and those. I already have the EPROMs and the 74LS21s and the capacitors. Now we're just working on the game, and the game is a coming. That's it, I'm not going to tell you anymore about the game that's coming. <laughs>